All right, in this problem, we're going to be writing the find free block method. I'm going to go ahead and talk through the problem statement right now. You can go ahead and skip forward to when I actually solve it if you want to skip all that. So let's go ahead and talk about it. So it says write the find free block method, which searches period for the first block of free minutes that is duration minutes long. If such a block is found, find free block returns the first minute in the block. Otherwise, find free block returns minus one. The find free block method uses the helper method is minute free, which returns true if a particular minute is available to be included in a new appointment and returns false if the minute is unavailable. And then we have some minutes in some period, and then we have some method calls that we're going to be using once we actually write out our code. Um, and it says to complete the method find free block, you must use is minute free appropriately in order to receive full credit. I'm going to go ahead and write out some pseudocode first so that we can go ahead and orient ourselves with this problem. So we're trying to find the first block of duration free minutes during that period. So this means that we're going to be keeping track of the total number of minutes that are free consecutively. And as soon as we find that a minute within a period is not free, we would say that our consecutive block of minutes would be reset, right? So first what we're going to want to do is create a variable to keep track of the current consecutive number of free minutes, okay? So that's going to keep track of the consecutive number of minutes. Then what we actually want to do is, so we're being told that each period has 60 minutes in it. So between um, 0 and 59, that's how many minutes are in a period. So those are all of our, I would call them eligible minutes that we can loop through to find this duration block of minutes. So I would say loop over all the minutes in the period. And so then what are we doing inside of our loop? We are checking whether a certain minute in a certain period is free. Okay, so check if the current minute is free. Then what do we do based on if it's free or not? So if it is free, increment the number of consecutive free minutes. So if, for example, one minute is free and then we increment our loop and then the next minute is free as well, we would say that we have two consecutive free minutes. If, however, we move on to the next minute and that one is not free, we would have to reset our consecutive number of free minutes because we cannot say that that was another free minute. So if it isn't free, sets the number of consecutive free minutes to zero. So we're basically resetting the counter. So what else do we want to do inside of our loop? So remember that we're looping from uh, zero to 59 minutes and we keep incrementing this, this variable that you track of the consecutive number of free minutes. What this means is that we might be able to return early. If for example, let's say we check the first five minutes of the period and we only needed a five minute block, we wouldn't need to check the rest of the minutes within our period, we can just go ahead and return it. So um, if we have found duration number of consecutive free minutes, return the first, first minute in the block. Okay, so this is just going off of what we wanted to return here, um, returns the first minute in the block if such a block is found. Okay, and so that should finish up the logic in our loop. So now if we looped over all the minutes in the period and we didn't find a block of free minutes that was duration minutes long, we're going to, um, if we have not found a block of minutes, minutes duration long, we're going to return to minus one. So this is the other case. So return minus one if such a block is not found. And this should be outside of our loop because at that point we've already checked all the eligible minutes in the period. So that should be our pseudocode. So let's go ahead and start writing it out. So create a variable that you track current consecutive number of free minutes. So this is probably going to be an int. Okay, so num free in row, set that equal to zero. So then we want to loop over all the minutes in the period. So for this, we can we're going to be using an int since we know that there's between zero and 59 minutes in a period. 
we can go ahead and just use that as of the bounds for our for loops. So for int i is, i is less than or equal to 59, i plus plus. So remember that the period has 60 minutes in it, but since we're starting at zero and ending at 59, we have to include that 59th minute. That 59th minute is our 60th minute. Okay, so we're looping through every minute in the period. We want to check if the current minute is free. So we're using our i variable to keep track of our current minute. So remember that within the problem, it said you should be using this is minute free method. What this does is it returns a Boolean if the minute within that period is available and false otherwise. So let's go ahead and store that in a Boolean. So Boolean is free, is minute free. So uh, how do we know what period we want to pass into is minute free? Remember that find free block, you're actually given a period that you're trying to look for a free block in. So we would just use that parameter again. And then what is the actual minute that we're looking at it would be this i okay so if it's free so if is free increment the number of consecutive free minutes so this means that we found another free minute so num free in a row we're going to increment that if it's not free so this is going to be an else right so it's either free or not free if it's not free let me put this inside of the else case. If it's not free, we're going to set the number of consecutive free minutes to zero. So num free in a row is going to be zero. So those are the two cases we have. Then if we found the duration number of consecutive free minutes, we're going to return the first minute in the block. So if, what are we checking for? If num free in a row, remember this is the variable we're using to keep track of how many we have in a row. If that is equal to duration, so we found a block that is duration minutes long, we're going to return the first minute in the block. Okay, so what does returning the first minute in the block look like? So remember that i is keeping track of what current minute we're on. So at this point, i is the last minute in the block. Right. So what I mean by that is, say, for example, we're looking for five consecutive minutes. We would have gotten to I equals four at this point, but we want to return the first minute in the block. So we're going to somehow use I duration and uh, maybe an offset to get back to the first minute in the block. So it's, I think it should make sense that we're going to take I and we're going to subtract duration from it. So you're going back however many minutes are in the block. Um, and then I would say you actually also have to do plus one. The reason why is we are zero indexed. So even though at i equals four, that would be the fifth free minute in the block. If you were, if your duration was five and you did four minus five, you would get minus one. Minus one is not the first free uh, minute in the block. It would be zero. So you have to offset it by one. Okay, so that's why we have plus one here. And that should be all of the logic inside of our loop. So then if we checked every single minute in the period and we didn't find duration number of consecutive free minutes, that means that the other case is true, that there isn't a block that is duration minutes long. So in that case, we're just going to return minus one. And that should be all the code that we need to write for find free block. So like I always say, do not move on to the next problem until you have tested out your code. So we want to test out the code. So I created this little visual of the uh, minutes in period two, because I think the way they set up their data table is a little bit confusing. So let's go ahead and reference this for while we're testing it. The first method call is find free block 215. So period is equal to two and duration is equal to 15. So we're looking for a free period that is 15 consecutive minutes. We set num free in a row equal to zero, and then we go ahead and loop through uh, the minutes in the period. So we can go ahead and do the first couple of minutes, and then maybe you'll see a pattern start to form. So uh, we start off with i equals zero. We check whether that minute is free. So is minute free of two zero? If you go to the data table or to the graphic that I showed, it is not available. So we would not increment num free in a row, and we would set num free in a row equal to zero. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next minute. You'll see that, that one also is not free. It's booked, I guess. So we wouldn't be able to increment num free in a row. And once again, we're setting num free in a row equal to zero. Okay, so you can kind of see that for the first 10 minutes, we're not going to get any free minutes. So we cannot even start off our num free in a row. 
So let's go ahead and jump ahead to minute 10, where we finally have a free minute. So um, it says that the 10th minute in period two is free. So now num free in a row will be one. And then check if uh, one is equal to 15. It is not, that's not enough minutes. We have to keep finding more free minutes in the period. So we can go ahead and set i equal to 11. This one is also free, so we can increment this again. Uh, 2 is not equal to 15, so we keep doing that. So uh, we can sort of fast forward a little bit. So um, 12 is free as well. 3 is not equal to 14, 15. 13 also free. 4, 4 is still not equal to 15. And then we get to 14, also free. 5 but five is not equal to 15. Then once we get to 15, unfortunately, this whole 15 to 29 minute block is not free. So um, instead of incrementing our num free in a row again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it equal to zero. So we're now back to square one. We had found five free minutes, but that was not long enough. We hadn't found 15 minutes. So we are back to zero, unfortunately. So zero is not equal to 15. So we could test 15 through 29. I don't want to waste your time. Let's just skip ahead to 30. Okay, so at 30, 30 is free. So we would uh, set our num free in a row equal to one. One is not equal to 15. So we keep checking if the minutes are free. Let's go ahead and just speed up ahead. So if you do were to check 30 through 44, you would see that 15 minutes are free. So once you got to the 44th minute, that would increment num free in a row to 15. We have 15 free minutes. 15 is equal to 15. So we are finally able to return the first minute in the block. So that would be at this point, i is equal to 44. So 44 minus 15 plus one. So what we're gonna get is the first minute in that free block is 30. All right, so this next method call, we're calling it with duration nine. So we're trying to find a nine minute block. So we can go ahead and start off with the zeroth minute, check whether it's free. So two zero, it is not. So we're gonna set num free in a row equal to zero. And then when we check whether zero is equal to nine, it is not. So what this means is we cannot return the first minute in the block. Basically, you'll notice that the, the next nine minutes are also not free. So this whole time we're just setting num free in a row equal to zero. So we can go ahead and speed that loop up a little bit. So once we move on to the 10th minute, however, the 10th minute is free. So we can finally increment num free in a row to be one. One is not nine, unfortunately. So we have to keep looking for more minutes. So if we wanted to speed up the loop, we would look at 10 through 14. At that point, we would have found five free minutes in a row. Five is not nine, however, so we have to keep looking. By the time we get to the 15th minute, we have to once again reset our counter because by the 15th minute in the block, we do not have a free minute. So this is once again zero, and then uh, zero is not equal to nine, so we have to keep looking. Right. So then once we checked 15 through 29, all of those minutes were not free. So we get to the 30th minute. By the 30th minute, we can actually increment num free in a row to be one. One is not equal to nine. So we have to keep looking ahead. Luckily, though, between 30 and 44, there are 15 free minutes. So you can assume that there are also going to be nine free minutes. So by the time we get to the 38th minute, we're gonna guess that we have nine free minutes in a row. Nine now is equal to nine. So what we do is we return i minus duration plus one. So 38 minus nine plus one is going to give us 30, which is correct. That is the first free minute in the block of the nine minute block. The final method call is find free block 220. So we're trying to find a 20 minute block within the period. So once again, we start off with i equals zero. We check whether is minute free of period to zero. You already know what's happening here. The first 10 minutes are not free. So you can go ahead and skip over those uh, because we're gonna get that zero is not equal to 20. Then, um, so let's go ahead and skip those first 10 minutes. Then we move on to minute 10 minute 10 is free so we will be setting num free in a row to one 
one is not 20 however so we have to move on um, you'll see that from 10 to 14 we have five free minutes so it, by the time we're calling is minute free of 14 we have num free don't always equal five but five is not long enough okay once again we're our plans are foiled by minute 15 because at that point our num free in a row is going to be set to zero again because uh, minute 15 is not free so we cannot continue our consecutive block so then let's go ahead and skip ahead to the 30th minute so at the 30th minute that one is actually free so we can once again start off the num free in a row counter and then uh, if we skip ahead to i equals 44 we're going to get that we have 15 free minutes in a row that's sweet that's awesome you love to see that however that is still not long enough so we have to keep moving forward so let's go to the 45th minute the 45th minute unfortunately is once again unavailable so we have to reset our num free in a row equal to zero so it's now going to go into the else case it's zero so zero is not 20 so we need to keep moving on so if we uh, from 45 to 49 it's none of those minutes are free so by the time we call is minute free of 49 we're still at zero and zero is not 20. so then let's go ahead and move on to minute 50. a minute 50 that one is actually free so we can increment num free in a row to be one one is not long enough let's keep looking forward so you'll see um we're actually in the last 10 minutes of the block so by the time you get to minute 59 and you're calling is minute free 59 you're gonna get that we only have 10 free minutes in a row and unfortunately 10 is not a long enough block so uh, by the time we increment our i again we're gonna get 60 which is no longer less than or equal to 59 so we're gonna skip over the for loop logic and we're going to return minus one because in this case we have not found a block of time that is 20 minutes long the longest duration if you were to check it for it by eye would have been that 15 minutes so hopefully that helps you out with this find free block method if you have any questions feel free to leave them down below and i'll get back to you and i hope you have a great rest of your day